Hey yo, welcome back to Battlefield everyone. I'm your host Monk. And we are ready to play some Ashes. Man, oh man, it's oh it's really close to me right saying uh, Star Wars Destiny. Then how long? Yeah, I'm ready to go. So I am trying this out, so hopefully this goes well. Um I'm gonna be playing a uh A I A I L, so Ashes International League. Um Ooh. Or Battlefield 6, Battlefield 3. Um, so he can keep putting his allies back to his own. Um, pretty sure. I'm good here. So, the biggest portion of this game. So, if you haven't seen Ashes or anything like that, I highly suggest that you check out, check out Team Covenant's videos. Um, as well as Let's Plays of Ashes on Ashtetti platform itself, or just in general what the game is. It's a glorious card game that's um, based off these awesome uh, artwork, man. Um, where you pretty much have, it's kind of like Magic, uh, Magic's Commander style. Um, so you have a commander, or in this, Red Phoenix Borns that have special abilities that are listed on the very bottom there. You only can have so many people on your battlefield. That's what battlefield number is for. Spellboard, it tells you how many spells you can have down here um, at one time. Um, but it kind of is a game that's a little complex at very at first. Oh, that's a horrible roll. Um, and then it also does like an RNG kind of based stuff about dice. So uh, another dice card game, kind of like Star Wars Destiny, that makes it a little bit crazy. Um, at the very start of these games, um, which we'll get in the nuances of of these games and main action, um, side action, but uh, the at the very beginning of a game, uh, we all roll off. So um, there's class sides, there are uh, the best sides of each one of these. So when you go highlight one of these, it tells you um, what symbol does what. Um, but the top one is labeled as the power side. The middle one's labeled as the class side, the, and the nice little triangle point labeled as the generic. Um, so we do a nice little roll off to try to see who gets the most generics for the most part. Whoever gets the most generics gets the choice on if they get to go first or if they want the other part. Um, want to. Gotcha. Sorry. Driving a little bit here. Okay. Um. So I just realized, kind of like, I need to bring it up. No, I'm just gonna figure out how to make it better for you guys here. Um. I would kind of like scoot it this way, maybe. Just so you guys get the most out of this. Um, yeah, that should be. Um, on down here, so her life total is 19. Um, in the center and portion of that card right underneath, the nice little artwork. Uh, Jessa does a little crazy stuff. Um, and Xander, his health is 20. So I got a lot of health to go. Um, my mill, my basis on every single deck that I kind of make is mill driven for the most part. I mean, I think of it as thir they have 30 life that I have to go real quick. Um, he rolled on uh, the most basic, so he got to uh, get a choice to go first. He chose to go first, and each turn, each um, player's turn, they get to play one main action, which is notified as a circle on the top right of each card. So, a nice little circle with an and a side action, um, which is labeled as like a little tiny triangle, um, kind of looks like a star. Um, which, um, so I think I'm just gonna start with the okay, dev book, and so I can get like a blocker out if my next. Um, so these are ready spells that you can play each round. So I need. 
Um, so the greatest thing that makes Ashes Ashes is the same is something that uh, no other one person is, or no other game has really done, where it allows you to pick your first five cards. And what was done just so we were able to go and go through our whole entire deck of stuffs and things, right? And go and pick the five cards you want to do uh, right when you sit down against the opponent. So it gives you a nice little up tempo on um, what you're going to need to possibly go against whatever deck you're going to be fighting right now. Um, so in this regard, so on here, I played No Good Dove, right? The No Good Dove book was a main action to put down last turn. Um, my turn this round is I'm utilizing that thing, which is and in the center of this card, there's a navigation circle, uh, which is says main action plus exhaustion using this card up or tapping it like in magic and paying whatever cost it says. So I need to pay one heart, right, uh, to play the Orchid Dove. That's my main action for this. Uh, just like magic, they have like two little sides, attack and life. Or attack and defense type thing. Uh, it puts out another book called Butterfly Monk Shooting. Um, by the way, great, uh, good luck, man. I never even said it. <laughs> good luck, have fun. Oh, man. Got to say it. Um, but um, lost my train of thought already. I could just do this, get rid of that. I don't have to worry about it. Um, 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 um. I'll try to see if he attacks me or not. I mean, actually, three eyed owl book. So, uh, even to attack, attack is a, a main action. I remember what I was talking about. So for the attack, uh, so each one of these has an attack value and a life value um, and possibly has special abilities, just like the Winged Lioness has stopped. This unit can be guarded against anything. So, so when it attacks something, then that's pretty much the only thing I can know. Um, block it for the most part. Um, and Orchid Dove has a nice little thing where if it's destroyed, then I can top, top deck. Or into the card pile. The molten gold is really nice. Go bye bye. That goes in. Doggy. Ooh. That's. Um. So. Decisions here. Um, because you can attack with both of these right now and, and well and do damage or I can play this right now um, Minimizing the damage overall I think that's the goal here And then turn so law of fear is a nice book uh, book that goes and gets away at the end of the turn But it reduces the attack values of all units. So even if I attack um, it reduces my attack values on my cards, but dubs is zero, so it doesn't really matter if we go. Um, um, and there is no negatives in part, but um, it has also a nice little other thing. So I should probably use fear here. Like false demons, nice. It's a two-two that comes out. Um, but I really need to get rid of this big hitter. This number two antics on. Um, while I can. See what I get uh, with abundance. Abundance is pretty cool because it makes us both draw two cards, but we both have an option. To not draw those two cards. If I have to draw a card, then it does damage. So the goal is again trying to take as 
the less damage possible. Um, we have 70 minutes for AIL. So AIL is Ashes International League. A great group of people, by the way. Uh, just the one throughout oh, the world competing. This awesome little. Uh, just big shout out to Black Hat Games for this game. It's been uh, my big past time ever since uh, Star Wars Destiny left. Um, and uh, that, and, along with Gloomhaven and all the other stuff. Can... So he doesn't. Uh, so he just passes me, I think. So it looks like he is just waiting on something. So I'm going to go ahead and abundance here. Probably trying to go and. It looks like maybe Raptor Herder or something like that inside. Ooh, there we go. Um, so I can Im immediately play three eyed out whenever I want, but as you can see, there is some uh, big things I can come and just split. Three eyed out allows me to discard from their hand. I uh, use action. Okay. Um, so I don't want it, want them to kill it automatically. So now I'm kind of just like doing a stall tactic thing, trying to see exactly what he or what he's trying to do. Um, but right now it's kind of looking like you utilizing the Against his big hit item, so I don't have to worry about taking it all. Oh, root armor. Okay. So now he's worried about possibly uh, meteors, which you'll see here in a little bit, hopefully. Uh, if, yeah, I have one. One in this one. Um, uh, that does multiple damage. Um. But with that being said, I'll just slow roll here and play this Orchid Dove Book. So you're able to, even though I have four spell boards, so one, two, four, um, you're able to stack them. Um, when they become stacked like this, when you play the multiple of the same books, uh, some books, um, if you notice this, uh, come in three side out, have a focus action. That means it doesn't really add or stack or do another special ability with that. But yeah, in this regard to Orchid Dub books, it says focus one. So when you have another that's stacked on top, I may change the activation cost. So no longer have to pay a heart. I can pay any generic I want to. So now other than using ink dice, I can utilize the white dice, the purple dice, or brown dice. Um, but these are also known as real other names. Uh, they actually have nice. Dice himself in this game do stuff as well, which is really, really awesome. So the pink dice is charm. So if I can, uh, if you get the power side of this, which this is the only one that I now, um, I'll go ahead and play. And I'll pass my turn again, stalling my life away. Uh, that's my goal for the next. Um, but the charm dice right here, so I can use this snake um, and put it on one of his that would do damage of uh, which is pretty nice. Um, and then time magic, if you get the turtles, turtles, you can place a status token on uh, a target unit I control and then remove the status token from the target unit as well, so it, their units are ours. Um, as well as um, vine. Divine, if you get the nice little line, if you place it on one of your own guys, that bumps up their attack value by one. And this one's pretty, uh, like, my most favorite um, out of them all. So if you get a wolf, use the wolf to reduce the side of this, of two of their die by, by uh, one side. So in this regard, uh, it would go from a wolf to a mask, or the mask to a... <sighs> Game is so complex and it can get rude. Um, so I'm going to use this spear. Fear is pretty awesome. Destroy a unit you control if you do. wound tokens for or equal to destroyed units recover value. I discard a target. So don't care about the recover value stuff. I'm in it for the discard here and get rid of a big ticket item there. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize one of these generics. Kill a dove. Uh, this allows me to uh, discard a card um, which also now activates Jessa's ability which allowed me to click it here uh, so once per turn after a unit is destroyed I may pay a generic which I'm going to do right now too I'm utilizing this time die to do a damage to his Phoenix Born so 19 health left all right 
And last but not least, because of the full thing of fear, I get to kill one of his units. So uh, these each Phoenix Born also has special cards. So if you notice on the very bottom right of this card, it has Jessa's picture, um, of course, and artwork as well. But this is solely a card solely made for her. So and she's the only kind of Phoenix Born that are able to play these cards or have the cards added to her deck. Um, majority of people have generic. Um, I'm pretty sure actually majority of them generic A side for. All their specialty cards but it truly just again depends on which imitation um, but there is a lot of different of uh, each one have um, which makes this game so unique um, and again it kind of goes to the same fact of of trying to build a deck in a magic style base um, where more uh, with a more even playing field, rather, um, I find very, very exciting. All right, so this is the attack value of two, which gets reduced by one because of the law of fear. So this is a one. This is a one. So I can play my three-eyed owl no problem without them killing it um, because he doesn't have a frog side. So the power side of the frog side allows you to deal a damage to a target. So with that being said, he can side action, right? So he can use this as, oh, yeah, using side action. Um, so using one of these dice or side action of a main. But with that being said, um, if you had a frog here, you can just like ping an owl and then attack with which still fun and stuff. Like that. So the really cool thing about AIL um, is this guy is. Oh, he's going to Earthquake, of course. Um, since my, my owl got de uh, died, then I'm able to use it as a medium as well. Alright, so the most I can take here is 2 damage, which is fine with me. Um, do I want to meditate or anything? No. So you also have a meditate action, right? So attack is very simple. You can attack with a creature to target the Phoenix Born or a, a single creature, right? So you can attack with multiple creatures born, or you can take one creature or attack one creature or one unit rather, another unit um, to kind of do like a single attack. Um, Again, people can do way better at just explaining this. Play by plays will uh, hopefully help someone out there. Uh, just let me know if you like it. I don't know if I'm going to post this yet. First go around on this. Just miss making content. Um, What else? Do I want to do anything? Or I just want to let him swing. He has no more dice so he can pay for anything with. Um, there are very, very little uh, cards in, in this whole game that you can get through to um, play without anything inside or without a dice cost. Um, I'll end turn. So meditation. So you have a meditation. Meditation is uh, a side action, and that allows you to turn any uh, any of these sides to any side by Taking a card out, out of your board, just like my spells here, other than Law of Fear, because you're not able to do that. Took two damage there, all steam and minus. Uh, but I also took five cards out of him. I don't mind him. So my Owl, which was, even though it's a two for one deal, technically. Um, so meditation, I can meditate here and get rid of a uh, deal this instance, and then I can move this to the power side or this to the power side if I want. Uh, it doesn't go up just one or one or or one each time, it's you know, whatever dice I need. Always a uh, die side of your choice. Taking too long on me just while talking. Already down like 20 minutes.
I'll keep all these dice. Uh, discard cards? Nope. All right. So he has Battlefield 06. Um, uh, no pings. Um, I could kneel here to make him uh, exhaust both these so he can't attack. But I'm, a, I'm okay with taking another two here. Um, if that means... I'm gonna mill one. So in this type, these types of decks, I try to pack as much healing as possible that I can try to fit with that certain horn. Um, so generosity is a really nice one, which you get multiple things for the two dice cost, um, and the main action that you utilize. So you get, you get the heal too, um, and you possibly can utilize one of these books again if you want to, or draw three cards. So you get what you kind of pay for, and, and then some. It uh, just really depends against you. That type of thing. Uh, he's still up with one one life, so he's currently. But again, if he kills the Orchid Dove, I can die to. So he's really making sure that these guys, Lionesses, are are safe. So I rather can pack up my defense here. Um, I'm kind of afraid what he's here. like. I'm thinking that he has another earthquake already. Again, cost two Eric, so any of those dice on there, doing four damage to a target unit, one damage to. So it does one damage to these guys, but with the root armor, it's my nest is five. Gives them a nice little defense. Again, if he tries to attack me, then I end up doing two back to him, or one back to him rather. Because Good reason. Because he'll uh, kill one of the dubs, and I'm able to scream. That's the ability for the harden. A one of my dice. I'm um, trying to keep my, uh, even though I spent two white dice, just trying to make sure that I have enough to do a kneel at any time. Um, and also making sure I have generosity play that I can heal. If I want to. Um, there is cards in here, just like for figures of the pawn or vanish. That are reaction spells, so they're kind of like um, so everything in this game is majority like sorcery based or playing a monster based, um, yeah, sorcery based in uh, magic. So you know you play it and that's it. Then it goes to their turn. Um, but you, they have instant like items that are called reaction spells in this, which is vanish and like figures of the fog to pay the cost or whatever situation happening listed on the card so figures if hacking me um ooh. um but yeah so uh figures of fire if he's attacking me with then i can use a wolf head which i don't have which is bad for me um i can use this card to block one of these attacks so if he comes at me for Damage. Hopefully, I have a wolf that can stop that. Uh, and banish is any type of spell ish item. Um, like a spell ability or dice power comes at my Phoenix Born or me. My cards I can utilize. Uh, um, block that attack. I think I'm going to have to kneel. I do not want to... Oh, 
still has two more room on his battlefield. Because he can have six, and he has four currently. Um, so he can butterfly monk if he meditates. Um, so he can get a frog to get one uh, that butterfly monk out. Or he can false steam and um, then time to. Uh, he's been building quite a board state. Abundance, what I get. Let him swing and I'll block uh, two of it so I'll get hit with four. Um, okay with. I want to though. I have. As the, well, he has Molten Gold for sure then. Oh, I do need Vanish for Molten Gold. I only have one Vanish. Oh, I already got rid of one Molten Gold. I think. I'm okay again with this. Now I can block the three. Uh, block with both the orchids still doing a damage to him, getting two cards out of his deck, and uh, take damage. Um, I still have a lot, two more law fear books I can utilize later. Gold so reduce damage, especially when he has like a ward by uh, ward state. I love that so much because if he has the full six, then that saves me. Oh, I'm so many games. Seven. Um, if he puts a butterfly monk up, that's just a. But again, that's only saying if I get a lot of fear. I've got 17 more cards to go. The biggest portion with the Jessa version of these type of builds is not enough card draw unless I get abundances. So there is other cards that you can use. That allows me to search my deck and tutor for another another card, um, but right now I don't think I found a place. Bad because we're only in round two here, I think, and we're already three minutes in. I've only done two down. Oh. Another big thing you're trying to be there it is. Oh no, the hydro is coming out. Um, so now it looks like he might just like another earthquake just to do damage here. Or frog paint on the hydro to do it. Um, that being said, I want to just go about 12 cards left here. <sighs> Make him use a, a, an attack. Um, I can use back to three eyed owl, probably with the celestial. That's on the oh no, it doesn't matter. Forgot that the law of fear, even though I was talking about it a lot, is it not? That's my bad. Um, I think I'm actually gonna do this here. I'm gonna gonna figure this so I can get another uh, card out of his hand. Probably not the best play, but doable. Okay, last thing gone. Um, I still can block two here. I'm gonna probably block this guy. He's gonna ping here. 
Oh, Nature's Wrath is so good. I'm going to utilize the shout here then. And um, this is so good uh, for him and for me um, because he has a lot of shield stuff. So he does Nature's Wrath, what deals one damage to everybody. Um, and Shining Hydra has a nice little ability where it removes a, a wound from him and establishes a head. So now it has two attack, giving it a plus one um, attack and a plus one recover. So he's making his own little thing over there, which is not fun for me. But now I get to go against everything right here. Um, so he has no more dice left, which is really good for me. I'll use this generosity right now while I can. Um, will we do anything else now? We heal the two, so I'm back up at 19. I'm ahead of him on life. Uh, we're just crossing the 30 minute mark. Let him think about that. Um, I could play another Orchid Dove out if I wanted to, um, but I'm probably just going to Abundance here. To make sure that I have, uh, at least I know what cards I'm going to utilize for next round. Um, yep, draw. Ooh, heals. All right. Um, uh, so this is the little side action thing I was talking about before. So little star looking up right there, right above the ones with the. Um, okay, my turn. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Since he did that, I should safeguard here. So safeguard is a nice play because he passes action. Um, I'm able to use a side action and use uh, make sure he doesn't swoop wide at me. This next round, I don't want to use it right now because right now it's only two, three. Um, and it's going to be his turn next time, first round. Uh, so this is what the little indicator shows. Um, so next round, he starts. Ah. Yeah, I think the uh, safest bet is playing safeguard. Uh -huh. Base action. Uh, probably use his mask. And like. Last minute. I will save the wing. Um, and I like to say that safeguards on there because it doesn't really go through. Um, uh, so he has only six cards left. I got fourteen. Um, so how decking really works here. Um, is. So I want to do here. Question. So if I let him swing at me, so it'll be two, five. Oh no, I'm gonna have to. I don't think I can block him now. I'm so terrifying one, terrifying one. So now I can't uh, block him at all. So he's damaged. So block him. Three. So five. Seven damage. So four of that. Or do I just kneel? I think I just knew. Yeah, my turn. Um, so, uh, now it really depends on what he's able to have in his hand. Get rid of his own creatures for him. Because I'm not going to, in my versions of the deck for the most part, for the most part, it really depends on the deck that I have out uh, or the Phoenix one that I have. Uh, majority of the time, I don't try to have uh, eliminate their creatures. 
I let them deal with that headache. Um, so uh, in this regard, with the Battlefield 6, um, he only can play two more creatures right now. So these are all dead weight currently. Unless he has a way to bring them back, there is ways to this exhaustion. Um, or again, tapping out if he. But only two more spaces of me worrying about dealing with damage. There's barely anything that he really hard at all. Um, for 19. You know what I mean? So that's the, the crazy thing about. So another lioness coming out. And another root armor. All oh, the roots. Um, so now I can go ahead and go Orchid Dove out. I don't necessarily need this time diet currently. All the needles. Um, I don't need a heal right now. I was really thinking about, uh, at least my, my mindset, right, is the viewpoint of 30 life. Um, even though it's more than than these things, but yeah, there is ways that you can kind of capitalize on certain board states, certain ways people play, um, um, and that's what I absolutely love, like using strategy and all this stuff on on meta decks to see what I can do or squeeze around with with the funsy stuff. Um, and again, it kind of comes from the same aspect of Sabine and uh, Papa Pelp in Star Wars Destiny. We can relate is those are really rng based decks so if you happen to oh there's three damage um so good thing here the bright side about this card of molten gold first off one it's not a bright side because i get hit by three to the face um but it is a fact that um safeguard doesn't block it it costs them two die and a card so it's equate of three right to do three damage so they get what their money their money's worth um, but for me, that takes away a card from their deck, unless they have some way of getting this card back, which majority of decks don't really do. Um, and all I got to do is heal right now to recover, you know, uh, 66% of the damage I was dealt, which was, uh, I'll happily take any day. Um, and I'll keep playing an Orchid Dove right now, um, just to... I can make it seem that I don't have anything. Um, that I'm trying to build the wall or the board state. So now he's going to go ahead and get one of the allies back to his hand. Using, using Xander's ability. He goes and gets another Celestial Knight back out pretty deadly card but he can't even play it right now so i'll take it so i think he's going to be uh waiting for the wing lioness to come out or to attack my three-eyed owl um he could fall steam in here still which is a thing Um, so false demon is a very big detriment now though for him because all of his armored units he can't even uh, Ping his guys down so he can remove one of these guys off the board But he really doesn't need to or want to guys off the board anyway Because if I don't end up having like a kneel for a round or something like that he can swing at me very heavily um, Yep, see so he's passing make sure that I don't have an answer to this um, He's trying to see what I can do so in this regard, I'm probably going to, so if I, if I do fear, that's going to utilize, I'll use the mask here. Um, it's going to kill this, which is going to enable Scream from Jessa. So I'm going to have to use another one, uh, which I'm okay with using a lion head here. Because again, I'm trying to save this. Um, so if I use this guy and this guy, do I even, do I even need, oh yeah, just in case because of abundance, right? Um, yeah, so I'm going to scream here. So we're going to, or fear here, utilizing the mask, uh, killing a dove, killing a card off the top, which is another Hydra, which 
entitles or uh, enables the Jessa ability. Uh, utilize the lion head. So uh, probably the wing lioness. So I don't have to get a swing. I can come up with another answer of milling a card. Um, so it is a big question of me taking out this Hydra or not. I do have another fear in here. If I can get to it. Um, this isn't in the order, by the way. This just shows how you built the deck. Um, but, you know, it's in here, the draw pile somewhere. But now I have to have him react to not having an attacker to deal with a threat L. So I can still nil, uh, I, st I can still heal here. I don't necessarily need to, but the fact that I have heals clogging up my hand is a big issue for me. Um, I'm still able to draw two right here anyway. Oh, well, another great thing about this game too, which I still haven't shown yet, but I can do if he ends up bringing out a false demon. Um is oh he can actually bring out both of these if he wants to fill out the other two slots but you can block with your um with your phoenix born so if they go and attack solely my dove here i can choose to block with my phoenix born if i want to to just take it to the face and a big old little armor uh, armor symbol gets put on this um or you tap it um uh real life um, showing that you blocked an attack and you take whatever damage the attack value of the attacking creature is done. So I can probably do that here with a three eyed owl. So if he goes and false demons out, um, and then I'll put my three eyed owl out, then he'll attack and I'll block with the face. Oh, he didn't do it. See what he has for an answer for three eyed owl. So I know he has the Celestial in his hand. My question is, what is the Celestial Knight more important than the other card that he has in his hand? Um, it could be an Earthquake. I think that's probably what he's waiting for, to be honest. Um, so he can just do 4 damage to the 3 eyed Owl, kill it, then do 1 all around. Um, if he does that, um, that's fine with me because that's still a net one for me, I guess, with the three-eyed owl. Makes him discard it. There's the earthquake. Uh, I do get to scream here now, though. Um, I'll utilize this. I don't need to heal just yet. You can't bring out a butterfly monk or a false demon. Um, that allows me to get... So he has no more cards in his deck after this. So this is where the power of abundance really comes in here. Um, so this game doesn't end when we run out of cards. Um, that's the funny part of this. Oh, please get another abundance. I did not. That day. Right? Um... So the damage comes from when you're not able to draw anymore. So each card you're not able to draw, and just like an abundance key, uh, factor, um, I can't do anything here. I'll just enter. I'll keep my wolf. Um, now I am first, first, uh, first to go. So now I can just kneel if I want to. Go on, discarding cards. So, um. So here he didn't take any damage because he was able to draw all the way up to five. But now if I have abundance right now, he takes two. Um and so on and so forth. Right? Um and this adds up. And uh if you notice on focus two, if I ever run out of cards, I don't get hit damage or splash damage from the abundance. Um so he's the one that only takes the damage. So again I'm gonna kneel. Make him frustrated. Sorry. Sorry, under rug swept. Um, and, 
that's the trick. Um, and then Orchid Dove, right? So again, the focus one factor is spending a generic, right? Generic uh, to get a dove out. But focus two means if they don't have any other oh. any other cards uh, in their draw pile, which they no longer do, then I'm able to um, Orchid Dove every time I bring an Orchid Dove out, do a damage to Vander as well. Um, all right, I'm gonna draw two more cards, see what I get. Got a safe card and the law of fear. Thing. Cool. All right, um, I think. And see, I'm not getting my abundances, and that's not fun for me at all. Um, I'm going to have to meditate here with the Ray Collect. So I'm going to meditate utilizing card from my hand to turn a die to any side. Um, so I'm going to turn that into a snake. I'm going to get rid of possibly the uh, Law of Fear. Yeah, I'm going to stop meditating there. Meditation to a snake now means, because I do have a wolf, so either I have a Figures of the Fog um, that might be, in play, be able to be played, or the uh, or Redirect, which is another reaction spell, like kind of like instant stuff. <sighs> and that instant debate on if I should put out a blocker right now. I should. Realizing the time dice. So he can't attack me out. Now it's really just buying time. I think I'm all three Neils gone. Um, and now I have to get 12 damage on him real quick. Alright, so we got four damage that can come my way. Um, I am going to utilize generosity by healing, and hopefully he unexhausts something. Probably uh, Xander, if possible. So I can draw three cards. But even if I get the unexhaust, then I'll utilize abundance. But I think the smart play here is to maybe you know utilize one of these. If he takes one off. Yeah, he takes off Sander. Yep, and I'll draw. There you are. Um, and then... For me. Uh, generosity takes both your main action and your side action. You notice with the... Again, that navigation symbol and the star. Yep, he's going to go ahead and grab something and put it in his hand. Uh, when he goes and does that, again, it doesn't matter what hand size you have. You can have as many cards as you want in this. Um, but it still doesn't affect... All pile. Um, there is again uh, other dice that allows you to put one back on top of the deck or on the bottom of the deck, um, and also certain Phoenix forms that are allowed to do that as well. But this is not one of those times. Honestly, I'm gonna let him swing. Like I don't care if he does a swing here. Uh, okay. Oh, I counter? Nope. Uh, I place that and place that to do another damage to you. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and play abundance. Turn. I'll take two, you take two. I like this dance. I still got four dice left. Um, if I'm able to get another Orchid Dove book, um, or an abundance book, that'd be amazing. I am worried about this uh, the counterplay here. 
right? So if yeah, I'm worried, honestly, because all Neils are gone. It it is very um very sticky situation now that I'm in. So the question really is going to be, so it's already been uh, 50 minutes, right? It's almost an hour. Are all the games like this? No. Uh, right now, actually, the state of play for uh, Destiny overall is um, um, very, fairly fast. Like first round, second round, no, like second round, top of, top of second round is very detrimental. And usually people will try to win within that time period. Um, my goal is, with every game is to... Um, I didn't get it, but I got something a little better. I got fear and a whole lot of heal. Um, is to try to slow down the tempo of a game because if I'm able to do that, just like this, what I'm doing right now, uh, then makes things so much easier or or better for me long run um so if i summon an orchid here i'm not really going to care about the orchid i'm going to end up getting the card that i needed here so i can get rid of i currently Um, honestly, Meteor is a dead card compared, like on here. Um, yeah, see, he's waiting for the Wing Lioness play. Uh, so he can go and attack the Idol. So with this being said, I'll probably do this to get rid of the Hydra. Um, this two, four. I just realized something now I can't play three ad. That was a bad bad choice. Let's see if he um still passes his death now he's gonna attack. I have eight damage more due to him. Um and he can do top around. So if he does two right now, six. I have to do thirteen. You do thirteen damage in one swing. Two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Awfully close. That's a power thing every twelve. Oh, that's not a good place for me to be. Not a good place at all. Um, I did just put myself in a very sticky situation. So the goal now is to still put out three out owl, utilize his thing. Earthquake. Great. Back to five cards. All right. Uh, that's all I can do. Grab about earthquake. But at least earthquakes are gone now.
So now you can smack it really straight in the face for 11. Or 7. Nine, 11. Uh, he didn't get a power side. So that's good. Yeah, food close. Awfully, awfully close. Yep. Okay. We got 15 more minutes left. That is rough. Side actions. Tensions, human. All right, come on. Gary. Entertaining. No, it's really hard decisions right now. Very important for me. Um, we do get to sudden death, which is going to happen at the end of the timer. And I have some heals that I can do, um, but I do need to get to so hopefully get through that that buffer. Come on, my friend. Rough. You have a meteor? Gotta go quick and fast here. Yep, Celestial Knight comes down. Uh, cleaning his board state. Um, now he has three deficit. So if we go to the next round, he takes three damage no matter what. Um, which, oh, so there's my other book. Now I'll add a positive life value. I love risky business, man. I love risky business. Got a figures here.
block that attack from Celestial. Um, so I didn't end up getting the other abundance. That makes it very complicated. So again, I'm going to heal here, again, because of just time being against me. So play another Orchid Dub book. So I can start spamming out these dubs, do an extra damage over. Um, unless he passes his turn, and then... Um, I'm okay with passing turn. So if he passes turn, then um, that would only do three to him, so he's still alive. But I'm the first one out. Yeah, so um, I'll be the first player because of that triangle. I mean, the arrow, arrow little symbol that they have. Um, so I'm not even going to. Just because of the time on the essence aspect. One just counting cards. And all I gotta do is abundance here. GG well played, man. That was rough. Holy moly. You happy? <laughs> scared of uh scared of um what's it called? Sun death. Started too frantically. <laughs> well, great game, man. Great, great game under. That was, that was brutal. You had me scared. Um, and that's exactly why I absolutely love the healing aspect because you're playing uh, mill, so it'll work in your favor. Yeah, you're. Right, but not when I have two life left. I hope if I can actually put periods in the <laughs> that was epic. Such a good game, though. Uh, this is this is the type of ashes I absolutely love. Um is like these type of very unique battles that you have a lot of people do meta decks that are like fighting each other uh you know beast versus beast for unit versus unit um using the phoenix points to take out units that kind of stuff which um i, I like playing very like strategic try to make sure that i can take a hit let him hit me in the face it's fine um and then try to find a way to still somehow win coming down all the way down to two life um so so hopefully you guys enjoyed this yeah, those heals are tricky. I wasn't going to be able to keep up with that. We're damn close. Too close. I comfort. <laughs> Great game. Great game all the same, man. Um, but, well, hopefully you like this Ashes content. Please let me know what you guys think in uh, the comments below. And just in general, um, if you like this type of viewpoint of my mind and psyche going through a game, uh, I do believe that if I keep doing it like this, then it, of course, it is going to show, you know, I do choreograph every single one of my games for the most part. Um, I know what cards I'm going to pick usually as a starting five. Um, doesn't really matter who I go against. And that's a kind of a nice viewpoint on my decks. I try to do. Wait, Wait yeah, I will. Um, but yeah, so I do choreograph a lot of my stuff because a lot of it is kind of in this method of play, at least right now for Ashes, and because I think that's my niche, that's my, that's my area of comfort. Um, but I am, I always slowly do other things on here. But if you like this type of content, just let me know. Um, see what if you see any misplays, which I probably made five billion, um, and as usual. But that's the point again of this. Everyone's human. You gotta have fun with it. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what Ashes is just straight fun. The community is great, just like Star Wars Destiny is currently still. Um, um, but 
uh, and a big reason why I got into Star Wars Destiny content. Uh, this Ashes community is pretty damn prosperous, and it's still slowly growing. So if you guys like Star Wars, or if you guys like Star Wars Destiny, uh, or and like Magic, and like a low cost point of buying into a game. You don't have to worry about packs and that kind of stuff. Uh, trying to go through mystery cards. These are all set cards um, that come out at one specific time. So contact Team Covenant and or Plaid Hat Games. Um, and they'll be able to actually set you guys up and get you what you need to do. Or go to the Discord, which again I'll have in the links below. below. But thank you so much for everything, guys. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, Battlefield.